Hello everyone and welcome back to Flores Corner. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing the order of draw. This is very crucial in phlebotomy. So if you're thinking about being a phlebotomist or embarking on a phlebotomist journey, then you need to embed the order of draw into your brain. You need to eat, sleep, everything the order of draw because this is something that you are going to be using in your whole phlebotomy career. So just a quick disclaimer, I am in no way, form or fashion a professor of phlebotomy or anything like that. Everything I explain is all that I have learned and that I have put into my phlebotomy career. And these are the things that I just kind of just picked up and just know exactly what is and what is not. If you do feel that I am wrong in any way, please just put it down in the comments if you think maybe I just missed some formed or however but this is just my personal opinion because i've been doing this for quite some time so let's get right into it. okay so what is the order of draw you may wonder the order of draw is pretty much the correct or precise order of blood that you are going to draw from a patient and the right correct tubes that it's supposed to go into so in layman terms all it means is this is the test that you are going to draw and this is the color tube that it's supposed to go into so why is the order of draw important? Why is it crucial? Who cares? Just pour the blood into any type of tubes. And uh-uh, that's not right. You have to follow the order of draw because certain tubes have additives in them. And, and the if you're not drawing correctly from the order of draw way, you can and will contaminate your blood specimen, which is going to give an inaccurate result or it's just not going to read right at all, which is going to delay the patient's care. So that's why the order of draw is very crucial. Okay, now on to the fun part. Let's learn about the tubes, the test, and things like that. So the first one is blood cultures. These are always number one when it comes to the order of draw. So blood cultures check the bloodstream if it has any type of bacteria or fungi which is causing an infection. A sterile procedure has to be performed before actually um, drawing the blood cultures. And that's pretty much just a certain way we wipe down the skin for any type of contamination that could happen or anything like that. I'll discuss that in a, more in another video, but that's pretty much the first one is blood cultures. So the tube that comes after the blood cultures is called the sodium citrate. The sodium citrate is the light blue top. Okay, the light blue top is the second one after the blood cultures. This contains sodium citrate. This is an anticoagulant. The anticoagulant just acts like a blood thinner, so it makes it where the blood is not clotting. So the sodium citrate, which is the light blue top, normally tests for like the D-dimers, PTT tests, fibrinogen tests. It's like good in coagulation studies. So normally with the light blue top, you have to fill it to that top line, like right underneath, a little bit underneath the light blue part, the top part. You have to fill all your specimens in that tube all the way to that. Or if not, normally the lab will kind of send it back and tell you you have to, well, not send it back, you know, but they'll tell you that you have to redraw because it wasn't enough of the blood specimen. So I almost forgot the sodium citrate has to be inverted three to four times. So pretty much, I know it's not the light blue, but this is just a demonstration. So pretty much invert means like you're going to turn it upside down and then you're going to bring it back. So inverting, you'll do one, two, three and obviously it says three two four so you could four boom there you go <laughs> oh my gosh i forgot about the blood cultures okay so the blood cultures inversion now this is kind of crazy because i've heard sometimes the blood cultures can be inverted four to five times and i also heard that blood cultures can be inverted eight to ten times so just do exactly where the type of place that you're working how they do the blood cultures you invert as many times as they say just to be on the safer side. Um, obviously, if you ever uh, invert too many times, you could cause hemolysis of the blood coat, I mean the blood specimen, and you don't want that. So always kind of know how, how many times to invert a blood, uh, blood tube. The next one after that is going to be the red no additive um, tube, which means that the red is just really a clot activator. Um, I honestly, don't really use the red as to collect the specimen and send it off to the lab. I have when I worked at the hospital, but what the way I use it now is normally I have this to start 
like the vacuum seal of like my butterfly and everything like that and then i normally discard this one and then go after and do my other tubes that's normally what i use it for as of now like i said in the hospital i have drawn the red tubes before but wasn't all very common so they are clot activated which means that they do clot the blood um most of the time i believe the red ones are used as a serum separator which pretty much means we have to put it in the centrifuge and you know it comes to serum state <laughs> but yeah that's normally what i know about like the red ones um but we also use the sst which i'll get right into right after this but if you just look you can see oops <laughs> that there is like no additive no anything in this tube that's why it's literally let me try to get it clear yeah so pretty much i've known they are used for like specialized tests or like i said to discard them so on to the next also when using these these should only be inverted five times don't forget one two three four five this is the proper inversion method. I have seen other phlebotomists kind of do that, like a shaky kind of thing. I don't believe in doing that. I mean, honestly, I was never taught to do that, but you normally do the inversion method. Next, after the red no additive, we are going to go straight into our SSTs, which is considered serum separator tubes. These tubes pretty much, I've seen them in a few different colors. Um, some places do use red as a serum separator tube. Um, I've seen them look like a gold tube as well. I've seen them look red and gold. I've seen them tiger tops and stuff. So different places I know, I guess depending on the brands that the company uses gives different types of serum separator tubes. So the company that I'm with, we had started out with one specific uh, a serum separated tube and then we went to a different SSTs so they do come in variety of colors so you do invert SSTs five times before actually letting them clot they will clot on its own about 30 minutes normally you're supposed to give it at least 30 minutes before you centrifuge them if you do centrifuging in your job some phlebotomists when I work in the hospital like I said we just draw invert and then you know send it down to the lab or however but if you do if you are the one that's going to be centrifuging it, you give it 30 minutes to clot and then you're going to spin it down, spin it down, excuse me. These are normally used for like CMPs, which is comp comprehensive metabolic panel. These check BMPs, these checks like thyroid panels, renal panels, um, lipid panels, hepatitis, um, HIV, pregnancy. The serum separated tube is used a whole lot that i've noticed it's used a lot for different kinds of tests these are just some of the tests i know there's way more out there but i'm just kind of putting out there just the main things that i normally will draw for the serum separated here's tube. another one that i've seen in my phlebotomy career but i have never used and it is an orange tube and this is an rst which is, which is called a rapid serum test and i'm just like oh these are so cute because they're all orangey and citrusy and stuff like that but anywho they are literally just a serum separated just as much but they take a shorter time to actually let the blood clot so normally i've seen like the orange rsts used as a stat instead of doing the ssts where you have to wait 30 minutes for the blood to clot you use the orange rst and then you send that down because it's already clotting very quickly so when they do have the gel you want to invert it five to six times Here's another one that you may see, but you probably don't use them as often, and that is the Royal Blue. It's a clot activator, and it has no additive in it, and pretty much is the Royal Blue just is, checks like the trace of metal, like elements, and this one in particular comes into a serum, and you will invert it eight to ten times. I have not used that one in a very long time but i know of it after your serums comes your heparin tubes so the heparin tubes is going to be a they have two different ones which is a lithium heparin and they have a sodium heparin all of the tops are green you do have two that are considered light green and then i think i've seen two dark green as well if i'm not mistaken the light green one normally checks like your electrolyte um, levels and your liver function um, I think the, the, one of the tubes have gel in it at the bottom and then one of them don't. They are inverted 8 to 10 times. 
So, so I know one of the tests that the sodium heparin checks is like bone marrow. Um, it's just pretty much the difference between the both, but between the two of them is that normally sodium heparin and what I learned has, uh, can preserve your white blood cell count like better than actually lithium heparin. I know that sodium heparin can also check like your vitamin B6 uh, levels, your leukocytes, if I'm not mistaken, and also like your lithium levels, it can also check as well. Now we're going to move on to our EDTA tubes. There, are, EDTA stands for, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, it's ethylene diamine tetracetic. I believe I said that right. <laughs> it's a very long one. one of these you're going to invert eight to ten times so now we're just going to get into the first one which is the lavender you've probably seen this one this one is very common it's lavender color top it can check for so many things um one like a couple of tests is like the cbc with auto diff with plate, platelets the cbc without auto diff with platelets can also be checked as well your hemoglobin a1c can be checked with the lavender um and something like your sedimentation rate as well. There are so many tests that lavender can check for. I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna get into some of them, not all of them. Um, they're all an anticoagulant. So pretty much these do not clot at all, which means that it's whole blood that you're gonna be needing for when you're drawing and stuff like so that. So the pink tubes, I haven't drawn for like my adult patients. I have drawn pink tubes for my pediatric patients. I do know that you can use the pink one to um, find the blood type of a patient, normally in adults. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe when I was learning about the tubes and stuff, I think the pink one is like used for, like a blood bank kind of thing, like for that type of use, but that's pretty much all I know of it. But like I said, I don't draw it often. There's a tan EDTA that I know is used for, uh, to check for lead. A Royal Blue EDTA top, which checks for like the trace of elements like metals, uh, selenium, zinc, uh, copper, like things of that nature. And also be careful with some of the tubes. Like I said, there is certain colors that are similar like you do have a royal blue serum you do have a royal blue edta so make sure you know which one have additives which one doesn't that is the same color like i said you do have your greens heparins one with gel one without like you know kind of get to know your tube so that you don't have any kind of confusion or make any really big mistakes I did draw from a royal blue one time, well, like I said, when I was first starting out and it was the additive one, which was the EDTA. And yeah, I couldn't change that. They called and said, oh, this is the wrong you know, tube for this. So I, we did have to call the patient for the patient to come back. And like I said, you know, I can't stand to do redraws because, you know, I know it's like inconvenience for the patient and sadly that's what happened because i wasn't paying attention at first and the royal blues i got confused so when she told me hey go in there and draw the the royal blue and i looked at the test and everything and that's my fault for not actually knowing which one was you know which and i wound up drawing in the wrong tube so it was a mistake on my part but luckily the patient was very <laughs> very okay with coming back and however but this is just an, an experience that i had learned from when i started out so the next one is our sodium fluoride which is also our potassium oxalate tube and that is the gray tube this normally checks like glucose the fasting blood sugar and your lactic acid uh normally when i had some of my patients like in the labor delivery ward or however who is doing the um glucose test which is the fasting blood sugar and then you check them an hour later. However, we would just keep drawing those blood specimens in the gray tube. I've always seen them as that in the hospital. I've always seen them as for the lactic acid as well. You will invert that tube eight to 10 times. It can be in a plasma state or it can be in a whole blood state, depending on the test. The next tube is usually the ACD, which stands for acid citrate dextrose. This tube normally is used in special testing. I haven't used it often. I think I've used it maybe twice in my whole phlebotomy career. And pretty much it does like, it can help with like DNA study, 
flow um, cytometry also like tissue typing like the genetic risk that a patient may have or symptomatic patients i believe it comes it has different tests like solution a or b i'm going to study up a little bit more on that like i said i don't often draw those the yellow tubes like that i know that you have to invert them between eight to ten times and it is also hope now onto our honorable mentions this pearl tube is considered the ppt which is a plasma preparation tube if i'm not mistaken this is the k2 edta tube which pretty much it separates the edta plasma from the blood in the tube so this is used i haven't honestly seen this used often in my phlebotomy career i know probably it's very um useful in other uh laboratory testing or however but i've seen the pearl ones i haven't used it personally myself but that's pretty much all i know about it here is another tube this black one is considered the esr that's the erythrocyte sedimentation rate tube I believe it uses sodium citrate as the anticoagulant. I haven't used those often either. These are one of those, I'm telling you, I see them, but especially when I was in, when I was in the hospital because we had like every two, you name it, but I never used them. <laughs> but I do know things about them. I know I might be skipping some of them, but this is like the basic ones that I definitely feel that you should know in your phlebotomy career. I honestly feel that these tubes come of every color of the rainbow, honey but like i said just try to get to know the ones that you should know in the order of draw obviously and anywhere that you go that you may see a tube that doesn't look familiar to you like i said in my other video always ask what is it what does do why i look like that <laughs> no don't ask like, why i look like that but what test is this you know am i going to know for sure to draw from this tube or what is it going to be called when you guys need me to draw this type of test is it going to be are you going to tell me is that tube so anything that looks confusing to you or something you may have not seen before or however ask questions so that you don't mess up the sample and also i want to mention my little pediatric neonates little tubes how cute they are I love them this small like honestly I already see the tube naturally for us as adults and like you know a little bit like older children and stuff but these little tubes are just the cutest you cannot tell me they are not that cute I mean it's never fun to stick my little newborns and stick my pediatrics but the tubes are just so cute but anywho but if y'all do want me to do like a pediatric order of draw or anything like that or how to do heel sticks or anything like that just comment down below don't forget to like this video. I really hope this was helpful for anyone who was a little confused or however. Like I said in my prior videos, definitely go out there. If you are really interested into getting into phlebotomy, don't wait to sign up to find out like the order of draws, the kind of tests and things like that. There is so much things out here on the internet in the library however that can these books of phlebotomy that can teach you these things and also hey why not before you get there already know a little bit of something but you can always have like these little um order of draw on your badges or however things like that anything that you feel that may help you in your phlebotomy career or even if you just want to know about phlebotomy and the type of test that we do and you don't want to be a phlebotomist that is okay knowledge is power but yes, y'all, this is the end of my video. If anything, if you felt that I was misinformed, if I misinformed you or however, if you have anything to share, please write that down in the description box. I mean, description box. Please write that down in the comment box below. I am okay with, you know, criticism and however, you know, like I said, it makes me learn. It teaches me some things that I might need to change or maybe just, you know, learn a little bit more about something. But I really hope this video was helpful for anyone and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.